flow control is a mechanism to make sure that the sender doesn't overflow the receiver. And it's needed in the cases where the, the sender is, has the capabilities to send very fast, but as the receiving computer receives the frames containing the data, it takes a long time to process them. And what may happen is if the receiver receives too many in a short period of time, it overflows because, in fact, the receiver has some memory allocated to receive the frames. If it fills up, it cannot process or receive any more. That memory, we often refer to it as a buffer. So we've actually have gone through two protocols so far. So let's just remind you of those protocols. I think there's no need for you to draw them really because I've, we've drawn them before but just so I can quickly remind you of what we've considered. Uh, we've had, say if we want the first protocol that we considered, we have A and B we had but say the sender and receiver and quickly what happened, the very first one we had the rule where the sender just sent. The sender sent with no feedback from the receiver. So we, we had a picture like this. We had frame one, frame two, and so on. The sender keeps sending one after another. And this, those frames propagate across to the receiver. And when the receiver receives a frame, it processes it. And once it's finished processing, it can move on to the next one. Now in this protocol there's no feedback. Now let's assume that the buffer space at the receiver is large enough to fit one frame. I think you've drawn this picture before but let's consider what happens if there's just one frame just in enough memory to store one frame at the receiver. What that means when the receiver receives a frame it puts it into the buffer and then starts processing the frame. It takes some time. It depends upon the, the computer. When it's finished processing, it removes the frame from the buffer and can move on to a nec the next one. Here we have buffer space for one frame. So initially the buffer, if I draw it here, here's our buffer. It's space for one frame. It's empty. There's nothing in it. But when we receive the first frame at this point in time, we put that frame inside the buffer. So say the, the buffer is full. The buffer is a uh, memory for, to store one frame. Initially it's empty and now when frame one is received it's, it's full. We store that frame in the buffer and we start processing that frame. Let's say it takes a long time to process. We have a very slow computer. Maybe it's going to, the time to process that one frame is going to take us down to here. We'd finish processing at this time. Now, what's happened? This first frame has been received, put inside the buffer. It's still in the buffer while it's being processed. So we're processing here. But then the second frame arrives at this time. What happens to this second frame? Where does the receiver put that second frame? It cannot put it in the buffer. The buffer only has space to stick one frame. It's currently full. So the second frame arrives. We cannot put it in memory. So we can't put it anywhere. So we discard or drop that frame. The receiver, the 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 receiving device receives the bits but doesn't save them in memory. It discards them. Essentially, uh, that frame is lost. It's as if we didn't receive it when we discard it. And that's our problem with flow, or the problem and the motivation for flow control. If we have buffer to store a certain number of frames and we re receive more than we can process such that the buffer becomes full, then we lose frames which are transmitted. And that's very wasteful because the sender sent this frame. It was actually received, but because we have no memory space, we couldn't do anything with it. 
and we had to discard it. And eventually they have to be resent, and that would be a problem. So this simple protocol of just sending can cause overflow. So we went through a second protocol called the stop and wait flow control protocol where we saw data and whenever receiver receives data it must send back an acknowledgement. Just remind you of that one. Still have a buffer of one frame. We transmit that frame, there's some um, propagation delay and the procedure was our buffer, let's draw it, our buffer is originally empty. We receive the frame here so the buffer becomes full. We've still got buffer space for one frame. And then we process. And when we've finished processing, note that the sender, after sending that first frame, is not allowed to send the second one. It must wait, stop and wait, until it receives an acknowledgement back saying, I'm ready for the next one. So this is how we achieve flow control with stop and wait. We'll never overflow the receiver because the sender will only send after the receiver tells it it's got space to receive one more. So in this example, we receive the frame, put it in the buffer, process the frame. Eventually, we finish processing. Say so we finish here, so the buffer becomes empty. We take that frame out, it's done. We've processed the data, it's finished. And that triggers us to send back an ACK, saying, really, thank you for the data, I'm now ready to receive more because I've got space in my buffer. And then the sender can move on to the second frame. So this is how we can achieve flow control. We'll never overflow the receiver's buffer because we'll never send one when it has the buffer full. Data ACK, and if we keep going, data ACK and so on. So this is good for flow control. What's the problem that we saw with stop and wait? It had what problem? We calculated some numbers in your last lecture. Have a look at your lecture notes, you'll see the problem. Wasting time, right, inefficient. That is the sender transmits under some scenarios especially when there's a long propagation delay, we transmit and then the sender spends all this time doing nothing. It's sitting there not sending. We have a link and we want to send across the link as much as possible. But if we have a long propagation delay especially, or a long processing delay, we spend a lot of time not sending and then we can be very inefficient with the data transfer. That's the problem with stop and wait. It provides flow control, but in some conditions it's very inefficient. And we did a few calculations of that last lecture. The concept of improving upon the efficiency, and I'll roughly draw it here, we saw that the sender spends a lot of time not sending. The concept we'll use is to say, can we allow the sender to send instead of wait? there. That is what we'd like to do is have a different protocol that allows a sender after sending the first one to send a second one, and maybe a third one. And we'll see that's the, the, our new protocol we'll look at today. We don't want to have to spend all this time not sending. So what if we allow it to send a few more? Well, let's, let's say a few more. In this case, let's say we allow it to send three frames before it has to wait for an ACK. In that case, the sender sends the first frame, the second and the third, and then it stops and waits for the ACK to come back. 
What about the receiver? If the receiver is slow to process the first one, a game will have an overflow when we receive the second frame. So we don't get flow control here. But if we expand the buffer, then we can still provide flow control. If we have a buffer of now three frames, it initially has space for three frames. We receive the first, we put it in the buffer. We're processing the first frame. In the meantime, we receive the second frame. Put that in the buffer. And receive the third frame, put that in the buffer while well, we're still processing the first frame. And when we finish processing the first, we can still send back an act saying, I'm ready for one more. And that will be allow our source to send the fourth frame, and that's because we'll have space in the buffer because the first one have been, has been removed. So our extension of the stop and wait flow control protocol to overcome the inefficiency allow the source to send more than one. And we'll put a limit on it, W we'll say, a parameter called W, and it will give us more or higher efficiency, but there's two problems with it, we'll see. One is that the receiver more, needs more buffer space. More memory used is a negative of this new protocol. We need at least enough space for three frames in this example. If we expand this limit to maybe five frames, we need buffer space for five frames. And we'll go through the protocol now, and you'll see at the end of the lecture, it's much more complex than stop and wait. And that's an, another negative of it. It's hard to implement in the devices. So it can be more efficient, but more memory required and more complex. So let's go through it now, so we'll return to the lecture slides and explain it. This new protocol we call the sliding window flow control protocol. First one was stop and wait, send one frame, wait for an act. Here, we can send W frames. Where does it say W? Somewhere on the next slide, I think. We're allowed to send a, a more than one frame. We'll define as W as a parameter, a window size of frames. And that will provide better efficiency than stop and wait in the in most conditions. But as we'll go through, more complex. Now, one thing that's more complex is that we need to now keep, we'll need to keep track, of frames, keep track of the frame numbers. So instead of send one, the ACK, data ACK, if we send many, get an ACK or get ACKs back. And for this to work, we need to keep the frames in order. So we'll give every frame a sequence number. Inside the header of every frame will be a number that identifies that frame in sequence. And because the header, we want to keep the size small, we'll only allocate several, um, some bits to that header. And that will be defined by the, the specific protocol or standard. So in general, if we have a k-bit sequence number, then with k-bits, the values we can represent in decimal are 0 up to 2 to the power of k minus 1. Let's explain that. Let's say I have many frames to send. I have 10 frames to send. So I want to give them numbers to identify them uniquely. 
And in the first example, let's use a two-bit sequence number. And this sequence number is included in the header of the frame. So, the frames, we'll talk about the first frame, the second, third, and so on. So we have the 10 frames. The sequence number of the first frame, if we're using two bits, we start, because we're using binary here, we start with 0, 0, which in decimal is 0. Okay, so the first sequence number is 0. Normally we start counting at 0 in this case. So the, the first frame inside the header would have sequence number 0. I'm going to write the decimal value here, but it will actually be the binary value, 0, 0, for example, in binary. The second one would be 0, 1, or 1 in decimal, then 2, then 3, The fifth frame, what's the sequence number? So fill in the sequence numbers for the remaining six frames. What's the sequence number given to the fifth frame? What do we have? In the back corner, easy question. Four frames have sequence number 0, 1, 2, 3. What's the fifth one? First four are 0, 1, 2, and 3. What is the fifth sequence number? <laughs> Give me a guess. The first four are 0, 1, 2, and 3. What is the fifth? Not four. Okay, so that's the wrong guess. Because we only have a two-bit sequence number, we can only represent a value with those two bits. So we must, we can't go to four, because four in binary needs three bits, one, zero, zero. But we only have two bits available to store the value in the header. So what we do is we wrap around, we come back to zero. So the fifth will be zero. And one, two, three and so on and we can keep going so that's the, the idea with sequence numbers we only have a fixed number of bit, bits available so we need to wrap around when we get to the end come back to zero that is if we had a three bit sequence number start at zero With three bits, seven is one, one, one. Eight requires four bits. So the ninth frame we'd wrap around to zero. If we have a million frames to send, we just keep going, incre incrementing the sequence number. But once we get to, say, seven here, we wrap back to zero in the next sequence number. So from now on in the sliding window flow control, we'll allocate sequence numbers to the frames. So it's a bit, bit confusing because we talk about the first frame is sequence number zero. The second frame is sequence number one because we count, start counting at zero. So we want to allow our source to be able to send more than one frame before it has to wait for an ACK. And to do that correctly, it requires the source and the receiver to keep track of what has it sent, 
how many more frames is it allowed to send within some limit and what has been acknowledged. So the main part of this protocol is how do they keep track of what's happened in the past and what they can do in the future. So we'll describe that and go through an example to illustrate it. First let's look at the sender. And we'll define a parameter here. We say in our sliding window flow control is allowed to send up to W frames before it has to wait for an ACK. In stop and wait flow control, the sender was allowed to send one frame before it waits for an ACK. Here we allow it to send W frames, where we would define W in advance. For example, I may set it to 3 or 7 or some other number. In this example we'll go through, W is 7, but in other cases it can be a different value. W refers to our window, and we'll see the concept of the window come up in these examples. So, if W is 7, it means the sender is allowed to send 7 frames, one after another. After sending those 7 frames, it must wait for an ACK before it can send the next frame. Now, to, to keep track of what it's sent and what it's allowed to send, is it allowed to send one more or not? we have these three variables at the sender. It keeps track of these values over time. It keeps track of the last frame that has been acknowledged. So at any one point in time we may, may have sent some frames and we have also received an acknowledgement back saying thank you that frames done. So if we've had some frames acknowledged, the last one that has been acknowledged, we record the frame number or the sequence number. The other thing we keep track of, we may have sent some frames, but we haven't yet got the acknowledgement back. So maybe we've sent three frames, but we're waiting for the act to come back, so we'll keep track of the last of those that we've sent, the last frame transmitted but not yet acknowledged. And because we're allowed to send up to W frames, do we have any questions at the back? We have a volunteer for the next question? Okay, good. Not yet, I don't have a question for you. <laughs> because we're allowed to send W frames without waiting for an ACK, if we've sent, if W is 7 for example, if I've sent three, I'm allowed to send four more. If I've sent two, I'm allowed to send five more. The maximum is seven. If I've already sent six, I'm allowed to send one more. The number more that we're allowed to send is called the current window size. So we keep track of how many more we're allowed to send. So in fact, we have a maximum window size, W, and we have a current window size. We think of these as variables that the sender keeps track of, the values, they change over time. To, to see how the protocol works, we'll draw them on a picture like the one shown here. Let's explain the picture. In the same way as my frame sequence numbers, we can think that, okay, the first to the tenth frame have sequence numbers 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 0, and it just keeps going. Say we have an infinite supply of frames. In this picture we draw them in the, in the squares, so a frame with sequence number 0, 1, 2, 3, up to 7, 0, 1, 2, 3 and so on. We've got, uh, it goes continuously in both directions. What we do is draw this picture to indicate the state of these values, these variables, at some point in time. We can think there are four groups of frames from our perspective, at some point in time there are some frames which I've sent already and the receiver has already sent back an ACK. We can think those frames are finished. I've sent them, the receiver has sent back an ACK saying thank you, I've processed them. Those frames are finished and we can really forget about them. They've been successfully transferred. We actually keep track of the last sequence number in that set of frames. 
That's the last frame acknowledged. And in this picture, it's in this example, it's five. What that means, the last frame acknowledged is frame number five. Because we do everything in order, if five has been acknowledged, then it means the one before it should have also been completed. Because we only acknowledge in order. If five is act, then so is four, three, two, one, and zero. So we only need to keep track of the last one. In this picture, I'll indicate that, or we'll see in the example, this vertical bar indicates to the left are the frames which are done. Everything's finished. My sender may have sent some frames. It's received the acknowledgments for some of those frames, but others it has not yet received the acknowledgment. So we'll keep track also of the last frame transmitted, but not yet act. In this picture, six and seven have been sent but we haven't yet received an acknowledgement back from the receiver saying they've processed them. So the last frame transmitted and not yet act is seven. Six is also in that set. Again, in this example we have a window size or a maximum window size of seven. So if I have sent two frames, frame numbers six and seven, and I haven't yet got an act, we can think there is two outstanding. I'm allowed to send five more. And that's what this light blue rectangle indicates. The current window size is five frames. I've sent two. If I want to, I can send five more, these five. I cannot send anything beyond that because the rules are I'm only allowed to send seven before I have to wait for an act to come back. So really we can think Frames which are done to the left of this vertical bar. Frames which have been sent but not yet act, six and seven. Frames which I'm allowed to send, zero through to four, the blue window. And frames which I'm not allowed to send, everything beyond five on the right hand side. So really those three variables, visually we draw this vertical bar Five is last frame act, and the blue rectangle to indicate the current window size. The window size is five here, and seven is the last frame transmitted. As we transmit more frames, and as we receive acknowledgments, those values will change. If I transmit frame zero, you can think this blue rectangle gets smaller on the left hand side we will think this blue rectangle, we'll call it the window, and as we transmit frames, it will close on the left-hand side, and as we receive acknowledgments, it will open on the right-hand side. And so it's a, uh, something that's opening and closing, like a window, and over time it will move along. So the name sliding window comes from that. We'll get to a, a detailed example in a moment. The receiver does about the same, but from the reception of frames perspective and transmitting acts. The receiver has buffer space for seven, in our example, or W frames. It has enough memory to store W frames. It keeps track of the last frame that has, it has received and sent an act for. It keeps track of the frames that it, it has received but not yet sent an act for. They are stored in the buffer, six and seven in this example. And it keeps track of frames that it may receive in the future, that it has buffer space for. If we have a buffer of seven frames, if we've received two, we've got space for five more. If we receive another frame, we have three in the buffer, we've got space for four more. So the window indicates how much space in the buffer. When the receiver receives data, it processes the data, and when it's ready for more, it can send an ACK, an acknowledgement. In the, ex in the next picture, the ACK is called receive ready. 
the, the meaning of this acknowledgement is saying I'm ready for more. So it's abbreviated to RR in the next picture. Let's have a look at an example and, and go through the details of how it works. So what we're going to do is consider an example where the source wants to send some data to the receiver and we're going to keep track of these three variables using such a picture at both the sender and receiver. Here's our example. We have a source system wants to send to the destination system B and just to keep remind you in this specific example we have uh, what we have a three bit sequence number So for this case we go from 0 up to 7 and then repeat and we have a, a buffer for 7 frames at the receiver, buffer space for 7 frames. And what the picture will show is that as we send data frames that are denoted as F, a frame, from A to B those variables will change and as we send acts back and the acts are denoted as receive ready RR that those variables will change with the aim of allowing the sender to send as many frames as possible but not overflowing the buffer the bu buffer of seven frames note that this is just one specific example in other cases it may not operate exactly like this so we'll just see uh, one instance of how the sliding window flow control works. At the start, the source system A, the sender who wants to send data, the initial state is the current window size is 7. We initialize it to the same size as the buffer. So the blue rectangle indicates A is allowed to send up to seven frames. It can send less but it cannot send more than seven frames before it has to wait for an ACK. Let's say at the start that A or the user at A has three frames to send. So A has three frames it wants to send to B. In a different example, maybe it had four or one or ten, but just in this example, it's got three to send at the start. Now, the window size of A is currently seven, so A is allowed to send up to seven. It has three, so what it will do is transmit those three frames one after another. And that's shown by those arrows in the, the picture. Frame with sequence number zero is sent followed by frame with sequence number one and frame with sequence number two. We send our three frames from A to B. And let's look at the change of the, the variables at A after we send those three frames. Before we were allowed to send seven, the maximum we're allowed to send at any one time, uh, have outstanding, is seven, the maximum window, We've sent three, so we're allowed to send four more. See, our blue window has shrunk from seven down to four. And the outstanding frames, those which have been transmitted but not yet act, are zero, one, and two. So this picture just keeps track of our current state at source A. It tells us zero, one, and two have been sent not yet acknowledged. 
If we want, we can send three, four, five, and six. We can send another four. We don't want to send another four because I ha only have three frames to send in this example. I don't have anything more to send, so I don't send any more. And then, since we have nothing to send, we'll just wait and see what happens next. Let's look at the destination B, see what happens there. And let's add in another thing on, on B. Let's say the buffer space. Buffer space, if I can fit it in there. What's the buffer space originally at, at B? We say it's seven. The buffer can fit seven frames. How much space do we originally have available? Well, seven, seven slots are available. We'll keep track of the buffer space as we go over time. Originally, we've, it's empty. We've got seven slots available. We receive frame zero. We put it in the buffer. So the buffer space is down to six. We receive frame one. We put it in the buffer. It's down to five. We receive frame two, put it in the buffer. The buffer space is down to four. I'll just keep track here. After receiving the third frame, three of them are in the buffer. We've got space for four more. Now, from the variables for destination B, it has received 0, 1, and 2. And it's got space for four more frames. Which frames? Three, four, five, and six. The current window at B is four frames. The window at B matches the buffer space. What that means is that B hasn't yet processed those frames. Maybe they're in the buffer and it's waiting to process them. And maybe in the future it can expect to receive up to four more frames. If A sends, it can fit in more four more frames into the buffer. In this example, we're going to illustrate a, a slightly different operation to what we um, may expect. When we receive a frame, we start to process that frame. And when we finish processing, we may tell the source we've done. We send back an act. Now, one approach is that whenever you receive a frame, you start processing, and when you finish processing that frame, you send an acknowledgement back. And when you finish processing the next frame, you send back an ACK, and so on. For example, B receives frame 0, it processes, sends back an ACK. It processes frame 1, sends back an ACK. Frame 2 sends back an ACK. So that's one approach. And we can use that in some cases. But if we receive and process those three frames in a short amount of time, sometimes it's more efficient not to send three acts, just send one act that acknowledges all three at once. And that's what this example illustrates. We don't send an act for each of the frames we received. We'll just send a single act, a receiver ready message, saying, thank you for those messages. I'm now ready for more. So this is a, an extension or a, a feature that's commonly used. We don't want to send too many acts because it creates more overhead. So if we can send one instead of three, that would be better. We'll come to a different case later. How do we implement that? So at this case, three frames have been received. They've been processed. We're going to send an acknowledgement back saying those three are done. Maybe at this time we can say we've finished, finished processing 0, 1, and 2, three frames. So we want to tell A that. But we only want to send one message to tell A that. And the common approach to do it Send an acknowledgement or receive ready. Instead of listing the frames with, that have been finished, we will tell A what's the next frame number that we expect to receive. If we've finished 0, 1, and 2, 
and we do everything in order, the next one expected would be 3. So we see this acknowledgement that comes back from B to A, the receive ready message, includes a value called, uh, in, includes the value called the acknowledgement number and it has a value 3. This is confusing for some people, but just remember the way that we acknowledge things commonly is to say, thank you, I now expect the next one. And the next one in this case is 3. As opposed to saying thank you for 0, 1 and 2, we say thank you, I now expect 3. And that implicitly acknowledges 0, 1 and 2. So that's common in protocols when we send an ACK, tell the source what's the next number we expect. From B's perspective, 0, 1 and 2 have been received. They've been processed. We've finished processing those three frames. So they move into the set which are done. Because we've finished those three, we remove them from the buffer. We had four, four spaces available in the buffer. That is, we had three frames in it. We finished them, remove them from the buffer. The space now available is back to seven. Had three frames, finish, remove from the buffer, so we've got seven spaces available, and we see our current window size is seven frames. Receive three, process three, and acknowledge those three. And from the B's perspective, the window has moved along, it's sliding along. Questions so far? I told you in advance, sliding window is more complex than stop and wait. It's more complex to explain and understand, so we need to go through it slowly. What's your problem? What question? Start with one. If there's too many, that's okay, but start with one. Uh, all right, uh, there's a question about what happens if we send more frames. Well, first remember what these pictures are showing is the state of the variables at the source and destination. Now, I say sending a frame, well, we send data frames from A to B, we send acknowledgement frames from B back to A. There's no data coming back in this going from A to B. And the, currently, we haven't got to this point yet. I think your question's about the next one, so we'll, we'll get to that in a moment. But currently, what we see is we're allowed to send seven frames without having to wait for an ACK. That's what the blue window indicates. That's how many I'm allowed to send. I send three, I'm allowed to send four more. I don't have any more to send, so that's it. Until I receive an ACK. And from the destination's perspective, this is not how many it's sending, it's how many it's received. It keeps track of what it has received. All right, I've got buffer space to receive seven. I receive three, put them in my buffer, so now I have buffer space to receive four. I process those first three, so I remove them from the buffer. Now I have buffer space to receive seven again. So at this stage, all we're doing is saying, keep track of how much we're allowed to send and how much we uh, can receive. It could have been different. What if we had 10 frames to send at the start? Well, we could have only sent seven of them rules are you cannot send more than seven before you have to wait for an act. Here we only had three though. We were lucky. We'll come back maybe to some other questions down below. Let's finish this acknowledgement coming back. B processes 0, 1 and 2. They're done. Send back an acknowledgement denoted here. Receive ready. The receiver is ready for frame number three. I've done 0, 1 and 2. Please send me frame number three. When A receives this acknowledgement, 
It tells A, let's look at the previous state. Previously, A had sent 0, 1 and 2. It knows what it has sent. Then it gets a message back, I'm ready for 3. That tells A, 0, 1 and 2 must be finished. Because if the destination, I've, I have sent 0, 1 and 2, the destination is ready for 3, so it means 0, 1 and 2 are done. So 0, 1 and 2 are have been transmitted and acknowledged and really this means I'm allowed to send three more. I was allowed to send four but three of three frames were acknowledged so I'm allowed to send three more and our window size grows to seven. We'll get on to the more uh, another situation in a moment but just note the blue rectangle shows how many we're allowed to send at any point in time or how much space we have in our buffer at the receiver. Let's keep going and see the second part. And we'll give you a chance to, to finish the diagram in the third part. So in the first part or of the example, we said that A had three frames to send. It sent them and they've been acknowledged. We can say they're done, that's finished. Let's say sometime later, A has four more frames to send. The window size of A tells it it's allowed to send seven. It has four to send, so it sends those four. Frame with sequence number three, four, five and six. And the status is that three, four, five, and six have been transmitted, not yet act. We haven't yet got an acknowledgement back. We're allowed to send three more if we want to. We don't want to at this stage. We only have four frames. So this is the status of A after transmitting those four frames. Everything from two and below are done, three, four, five and six are outstanding, seven to one I'm allowed to send if I want. Now here's something slightly different. We said in the previous example we received three frames and sent one act and that's a good idea every instead of sending three acts just save in the overhead and send one to, to represent three acknowledgements. But it depends upon the implementation and the timing as whether you send one act for three frames, one act for two frames received, or one act for every one frame received. It's actually up to the implementation as to how to do that. The problem is if we send one act for every three frames always, then the third or the second frame may take a long time to arrive and therefore it's a long time to send the act back. So in reality, the number of data frames we receive before we send an ACK may change. In the previous case, three data frames, one ACK. Now we see a case, B receives one data frame, frame three, and then immediately sends an ACK. Just to, to make it more complex, we'll consider a different scenario here. Let's see what happens when that occurs. Previously B had seven, a space for seven frames in the buffer, three through to one. It receives frame one, puts it in the buffer, and let's say it processes it very quickly. Gets in the buffer, the CPU is available so it can process it very quickly. So in this specific example, we receive frame three and then send an act for frame three. Saying thank you, I now expect what? Four. If I receive frame three, process frame three, I remove it from the buffer and I tell the source A, 
I now expect frame number four, okay, the next one expected. And that's what you'll see, and we'll see it when it gives back, RR4 indicates B expects to receive frame four. So three is done. After sending that act, three is done. The next one expected is four through to two. That is, we have space for seven. The buffer space was seven. It went down to six when we received this frame. But when we send the ACK, it means we've removed it from the buffer again, so it's back to seven. We have seven spaces in the buffer. That is, the blue rectangle is seven frames long. But then shortly later, we receive three more frames, four, five, and six. They're put in the buffer. With a note here, the buffer has space for four frames, seven through to two, the window. We'll continue in a moment, the, the, the destination, but let's come back to the source, the sender. We had sent four frames. Three, four, five, and six have been sent. But then I receive an act saying the receiver is ready for frame number four. Well, if it's ready for four, I have already sent three, four, five, and six. What that tells me is that three is done. That's finished. Four, five, and six are still being processed. Maybe they are still in the queue to be processed by the destination system. So four, five, and six are still outstanding when I receive this ACK. And I'm allowed to send four more. Essentially, this RR4 acknowledges frame F3. It says F3 is done. Every frame that's acknowledged allows us to send one more. That is, the window opens on the right-hand side. That's a detailed example. Let's see if you understand it by letting you finish the case in a couple of steps. Uh, what? First, let's say at this point in time, Source A now has five more frames to send. Five new data frames to send. What does it do? Think about what will it send across, draw that. And after it does that, how does its status change? Draw this picture again. Okay, so what does it do if it has five frames to send? Anyone want to get us started? Ah, our volunteer at the back. What's he going to do, the source A? I've got, yeah, I've got five frames so at the end point for A's perspective. I've got five new frames I want to send. What will I do? Can I send them? <coughs> From A to B, I want to send five frames. We, we're not going to wait for an act oh, to come back. To come back. No, let's send them. Well, if we are allowed to, let's send them. We'll send them another five frames or send them from four to five. That's the question. Do we send five? Do we send less than five? That's a good question. Look at the blue window. From, from the window, if you send, uh, from, from this one, you send, uh, or you send four frames. Mm -hmm. The question is then, do we need to wait for an act to come back? We don't need to wait. That's the key part. That's the difference between this and stop and wait. We don't want to have to wait for an act to come back. 
How do I know I don't need to wait? Look at the blue window. From the sender's perspective, the blue window tells me at this point in time how many more frames I'm allowed to send. I want to send five. All right, I want to send five. But the window says, the rules of the protocol tell me I'm only allowed to send four. Let's send them. We want to send the frames as fast as possible. And we need to follow the rules, of course. And the rules here are no more than four. So we don't need to wait for an act for previous ones. We hope that act for the previous ones will come later. This is the way to improve the efficiency. Don't wait for an act always. Send the new data first. Maybe the act will come and we'll see if it does. So in fact, we can send four of those five frames. So we send those four frames. And of course, we do everything in order. We were allowed to send frames with sequence number 0, 1, and 2. Let's send them. So F, this will be 7, 0, 1, 2, 7, 0, 1, and 2. We'll not worry about the act yet. We cannot send five because the window only allows four. What's the new status? It'd be hard to draw, but uh, the status from the perspective of the source, after sending those four frames, it's still got one to send. Three has, was completed before. So we'll draw our vertical bar here. Three's done. Four, five, and six are still outstanding. I've sent them, but not yet received an act. And same with seven through to two. I've sent them now as well. So four, five, six, seven, zero, one, and two are outstanding. How many more am I allowed to send? Seven. I've sent seven outstanding. How many more am I allowed to send? Three. No, keep guessing. No, zero. The maximum I'm allowed to send is seven. I've sent the maximum at this stage. So we say the window is closed. Maybe I'll draw that as that blue rectangle is here. It doesn't cover any frames. We can think there are seven being transmitted. None of those seven have been act just yet, so I'm not allowed to send any more. The window that tells us how many I'm allowed to send, it's closed. It's a window size of zero. So that's from the source's perspective. Now, the source still has one frame to send. It cannot do anything with that frame yet. So this is where flow control is taking effect. The source cannot send the next frame until it gets an ACK from the, the destination B. So let's consider a case where B replies. Uh, what? Let's say that B, again, when do we send an ACK? It varies. Sometimes immediately after receiving a data frame, sometimes we'll wait a bit and see if we receive other data frames before we send the ACK. So here I'll say that, all right, 
we decided at this point in time, we finished, this is the destination, we finished processing four, five and six. And when we finish processing those, we can send an ACK. And in this specific case, I'll say we'll send one ACK to acknowledge the reception of those and four frames, three frames. Why do I draw an arrow that crosses over? Remember that the, the arrows and the, the space they occupy is indicating the time it takes to transmit and propagate. Maybe it's changed or it's large in one direction. So we've, we've seen some frames from A to B. In the meantime, the acknowledgement has been coming back and it arrives sh slightly later. First, this acknowledgement, RR, receiver is ready for what? What's the number that we include in this acknowledgement? Write it down on your piece of paper. Then I'll come and have a look. What is, when B sends that receiver ready, what is it ready to receive? We received four, five, and six. And then note that time is increasing as we go down. At this point, we haven't yet received seven, zero, one, or two. Before we receive them, we finish processing four, five, and six and send back a response saying, I'm ready to receive seven. I've just finished up until six, so I'm ready to receive seven. I will not draw the status here, uh, take uh, too much space, we'll just focus on the source system. When the source receives that ACK, how does its status change? When the source receives this acknowledgement saying that B is ready for 7, I know I've transmitted 4 through to 2. If B is ready for 7, it means 4, 5 and 6 are finished. So our green bar moves here. Seven, zero, one, and 2 are still outstanding. I've sent them not yet act. How many more am I allowed to send? Three. There are four outstanding. Total should be seven. I'm allowed to send three more. If you notice that from the, the bar, the green bar here to the right edge of the, the window, it's always seven if you look at all of these pictures. Four outstanding, three allowed to send. We should send that one left over frame. Left over. That is, remember we had five to send. We only sent four. By receiving this ACK it allows us to send more. So let's send that one that we had left over to finish this. Frame number three is sent. I will not redraw this. I think uh, we'll get there eventually. So here was the, the window was performing the flow control. We had five to send. The window said you're only allowed to send four. So we were only sent four of those five. We were only allowed to send that last one, that leftover frame, 
once we got an act back. In stop and wait, we can only send the next frame, we can send one frame, then wait for an act. Here, we can send a window size of frames before we have to wait for an act. And that can lead to better efficiency. This is a three. Three gets sent, and let's to finish this say, B processes all frames. What have we got outstanding? We, we've received 701, 2 and 3. We, we process them all by this time. So we've eventually finished them so we can send back one last act. Receiver is ready for what? We've done seven, zero, one, two, and three. I'm now ready for four. Our sequence is getting long. Before 7, 0, 1 and 2 are outstanding, and 3 in fact, I hadn't drawn with 3 outstanding, we receive an act saying everything up until but not including 4 is done. So all of these are done. There's nothing outstanding. There's no other frames I've sent that haven't been act, so my window grows to seven. I'm allowed to send seven more frames. Frames from zero through to, note we had a wrap around here up to this three, are done. I've sent them and they've been acknowledged. I'm allowed to send seven more frames. Right, if I have more data to send, then I would move on. And if you looked at the status of the destination B, it would look the same. From B's perspective, it has received and act everything up until three. And it's got buffer space for another seven frames. So in fact, the picture here would look the same at B. They should follow each other, but not at exactly the same time. So a lot of new details here in this protocol. Let's go up to the top and just summarise what we've gone through. In this example, we had a three-bit sequence number. So we wrapped around after we got to seven in the sequence numbers. The destination has a buffer space for seven frames. Stop and wait, you only need buffer space for one frame. So here we have a, more requirements on the memory for the receiver and also on the, the, the source. We saw some different cases. Here we sent three frames. We can acknowledge multiple frames by just sending one ACK. And the way that we indicate what's acknowledged, we say what's the next number. We don't say what was done. We say what do we want next. We don't always have to wait for three frames before we send an ACK. It would differ on in different scenarios. In an exam or quiz question, I would usually tell you. For example, I would say, assume every frame we send an act. Assume every second frame we send an act, just to make it uh, easier. But in a real implementation, it would vary on different factors. And we saw that the window closed at that last point. Sorry, here. We got to a point where A has frames to send, but he's not allowed to send any because he hasn't received acts for the previous seven yet. The window was closed. 
As we receive acts, we can send more. As we transmit data, we can send less. That is, the window gets smaller. I'll give you some quiz questions that will allow you to practice the calculations of the, the, the window size, uh, the next frame transmitted and so on. So you can uh, look at further examples of that, that uh, sliding window flow control. Before we summarise on the performance, any questions on, on that example? You had quest many questions before. It's all solved. Good. It's very complex and it's very hard to capture in the one hour that we have. So. Uh, you may need to go back and look at it, and especially when the quiz is open, have a look at the quiz questions. They'll be smaller, but we'll test the same concepts of, okay, if we transmit these frames, what's the window size after doing that? So test those concepts so you can get some practice. Much more complex than stop and wait, needs more memory than stop and wait. But an advantage of sliding window can be we can be more efficient than stop and wait. And let's have a look at that to, to illustrate that concept with uh, an example which you have a few few pages forward on your handouts. Where is it? The example we want to look at, if you slide forward, is this one. You have this printed out, but it's uh, maybe the green doesn't come out so well. This is sliding window flow control, but here we'd like to know, well, how well can we perform? What's the best efficiency we can achieve? In the previous example, sometimes we had no data to send. The best efficiency can be achieved when we've always got data to send. So this is a case with sliding window flow control. The numbers were given to make it easy to calculate. Propagation, transmission, act transmission of 10. The first case is a two-bit sequence number. 0, 1, 2, 3, 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. And a maximum window size of 3. And the the boxes on the left indicate the frames that have been transmitted and act. They'll be grey, as we see in a moment. Green means we're allowed to transmit. So in our previous example, the green boxes are equivalent to the blue window. Red means we've sent them, but we haven't yet got an act. And anything to the right of the green or the white boxes, we're not allowed to send yet. So I think the green is equivalent to the window in the previous example. In this example, originally we're allowed to send three. Window is three. So we transmit those three. We transmit frame with sequence number zero, then one, then two. We're allowed to send three, so let's send them. Transmit frame zero means we're allowed to send two more. We've sent one, allowed to send two more two green ones. Transmit frame one, we've sent two, zero and one, we're allowed to send one more, frame two. When we transmit frame two, there are three outstanding, we're not allowed to send any more. So the red ones are those which are send but not yet act. Because our maximum window size is three, we get to transmit 0, 1 and 2, then we must wait. The window was 3, you cannot send any more until you get an ACK. And in this particular case, we get an ACK at about, or at exactly 510. We will not calculate the numbers, we've looked at that previously. When we get an ACK, in this case there's an ACK for every data frame, 
Think receiving an act allows you to send one more. So, I'm not allowed to send any, but then I receive an act. Ah, good, I can send one more. So we transmit frame with sequence number three, and we're back to three frames transmitted, outstanding, have to wait for the act, next act. The next act arrives at time 610. Good, I'm allowed to send one more, frame zero. I transmit frame zero, and turns out when that's finished, I receive the next act, allowing me to transmit frame one. After transmitting three, zero, and one, I'm not allowed to transmit any more. I have to wait for an act. When does the act come? At 1,020. And you see the same pattern arrives. We get to transmit three and then wait for an act. Transmit three, wait for an act. Assuming we always have data to send. You can check the timing there. That, uh, that's actually to scale in this case. What's the efficiency in this case? That's what we care about. How, how efficient are we in the data transfer? Well, the source gets to send three frames and then wait for an act. And if you look at the timing, it's really sending three frames every 510 time units. If you follow that picture, you'll see 510, we send three, then wait for an act. Then it repeats, send three, wait for an act. Every 510 time units, three frames. In the question, if you go back to the top, it says that every data frame, 90% is payload, 10% is header. So three frames every 510 time units. So of those three frames, 90% is payload and throughput is an indicator uh, or efficiency is considering payload only. So we get an efficiency of about 53%. Three times 90 divided by 510. Or in other words, every 510 time units, we spend 270 time units sending payload. Three by 90. There were no uh, units given in, in this case, it was just general. We get about 53% with a window size of three. If we increase the window size, the efficiency changes. Exactly the same scenario, but a three-bit sequence number and a window size of seven. We're allowed to send seven frames. So we're going to transmit seven, that is zero through to six. And you'll see that as we transmit frames, the window gets smaller, the green boxes get smaller. But note something different that happens here. We're allowed to send zero through to six. But while we're, while we're transmitting, I think, or when we just finish frame four, we actually receive an act for one of the first frames we sent. We get an act back while we're transmitting that first window of frames. Every act indicates we can send one more. So if you follow it through, if you look at the green boxes, it, the window never closes. We're always allowed to send more than one frame, or, or more than zero frames. The green boxes, if we keep following it through, it's never closed. The consequence is we're always sending. If we're always sending, we achieve the maximum efficiency. It's the best case we can do. And if you keep going, we'll always send frames, we'll always receive frames. The only overhead is header. We get an efficiency of 90% in this example. 100% of the time sending frames, 100% of the time receiving frames, 90% of the time receiving payload, 10% of the time receiving header. So we say 90% efficient in this case. 
So here, with sliding window, we can achieve the, the maximum possible efficiency. It depends simply on the, the payload to header ratio. You'll see some quiz questions we'll ask in such a case, what efficiency you can get or to compare two cases. What window size do we need to achieve the maximum efficiency? Three got us 53%, seven gets a 90%. Can we use less than seven to get 90%? Maybe six, maybe five or, or, or other numbers. So you'll see some questions about that.